it's time for another silly hat story. And uh, I made this one just in about an hour. Uh, I figure it's Halloween, so might as well take our heroes on a little Halloween journey. It's not a very, it, it's not like, it's not as long as the first one. And uh, well, it only took me about an hour and a half to write. And this is the first time I'm reading it other than when I wrote it. So we have to remember who our characters are. I didn't draw anymore, but remember we've got Woofer and not everybody is in this one. Actually, mostly everybody is, but not everybody comes back. Of course, Woofer and Sherper are there and you know, Dr. Fogg, of course, has to be there. And we still haven't fixed that. Um, Al and Betty actually have a little bit more to say in this one. And uh, these guys are mentioned, although Bumby is in there. And, uh, well, these guys are here. So actually, I think everybody's in this one. Um, Myrtle and Sid come back. And of course, Max. If you remember from the first one, um, I'm probably not gonna laugh nearly as much because this one I don't think is as funny. But, well, we'll see. One morning in late October, and Tweeter was sitting on a perch looking out the window at the falling leaves. Woofer was lazily watching Lady Dandelion carve a face into a pumpkin while Dr. Fogg read the newspaper and muttered about the things he read. Max was sleeping in Woofer's bed, as usual, and all was well in the house. When Lady Dandelion was satisfied with the face she carved, she placed a candle in the jack-o'-lantern and began baking pies. Tweet left his perch and got close to the edge and asked, Woof! What do you think that orange thing with the face is for? It's smiling. I have no idea. I thought they'd eat it, or at least give me some of what came out of it. Max, what's that thing with the face? Max opened one eye and annoyed responded, it's a human. <clears throat> no, that big orange ball. Max looked around and saw the jack-o'-lantern. Oh, it's that time again. What time? Every year, after the trees get colorful, they start putting strange things around the house. Statues of people without skin, women in black with cones on their heads, hang sheets with eyes from the ceiling, and those round things with faces. I have no idea why they do it, but the worst is one night people keep coming to the door and ring the bell. You can't sleep at all. They wear costumes and get treats for it. I think they should give all the treats to me. Are you sure they just give out treats? That's very nice of them. I think it's a waste of treats, but after this, it won't be long before they bring a tree into the house and put lights all over it, and balls. I always try to play with the balls and they chase me with a rolled up newspaper or squirt me with water. No, they're not nice at all. Why put all those toys for me to play with and then not let me play with them? I don't know why they do anything. Oh, and if you think they're so nice, wait until they eat the big bird after they stuff it with bread and put it in the oven. Well. I don't believe you, and they gave all of us a home, so I think they're wonderful. But I do remember the tree from last year, after the white stuff started coming out of the sky. Yeah, I know, you've been here that long, and they didn't give me a home. I allow them to stay here, if you say so. Later that evening, Lady Dandelion opened a window and placed a lit jack-o'-lantern on a shelf outside. Just as she did this, the doorbell rang and Dr. Fogg opened the door. A large dog was panting heavily and immediately upon seeing him, Max hissed and growled and his hair stood up everywhere and he jumped out the open window. Oh no! My Max, come back! Lady Dandelion, wait! I will bring the butterfly net! And with that, Lady Dandelion and Dr. Fogg took off into the night to find Max. Trick or treat! I'm Boots! I'm a dog! Hey, I remember you! I'm a dog too! Wilfer said as the two exchanged sniffs all over, tails wagging wildly. But aren't you supposed to dress up as something? Yeah, I'm a dog! But you are a dog. Yeah, I'm a dog! What kind of treats are you giving out? I hope it's not an apple. I have five of them already. Do you have any slippers? We're not handing out treats. This is new to us. How about a sock? 
it's not clean, is it? I don't like the taste of clean socks. Oh no, I can get one from the basket. Woof, I don't think you should. Remember what happened the last time? Yeah, and I remember that cat did it and I got blamed for it, but he's gone now. It's okay, I'm a good dog. I hope he never comes back. So this is where you live? Where's your house? This is my house. No, I mean your dog house. I have my very own house in the yard. I don't know. I'm always in here, except when I go for a walk. Oh man, you don't know what you're missing. You don't have to share with anyone and can bark at anything whenever you want. Once in a while you do get a boot thrown at you though, but that's only if you don't scare away the moon fast enough. Boots! Boots! Hey, that's my person. I've gotta go. He might be getting attacked by zombie mailman again. Thanks for the sock. I like him. I never see him playing at the dog park though. I wonder why. Sounds like he's too busy to play. Well, I guess I'm lucky. We're lucky. What about the sock? What sock? Wilfer laughed. Hey, the door's open. Let's go look for Max, too. Do you think that's a good idea? What if we get lost or run into zombie mailman, like Boots said, whatever they are? We won't get lost. I go around the block three times a day. I know it like the top of my foot, if you say so. And the two of them took off into the night. Meanwhile, Lady Dandelion... <laughs> Damn it! Hello? No, I have no butter. Okay. I, I, I have about maybe a quarter of an inch of butter. I don't usually eat butter. No. Several. All right. Bye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lady Dandelion and Dr. Fogg were lost in the darkness as they took off so quickly they forgot to bring a flashlight. They were stumbling all over roots and rocks and having no luck at all finding a max. Lady Dandelion, this is all your fault. If we hadn't left the window open, your cat wouldn't have run away. If you had brought something useful like a flashlight, we would have found my poor Max and been home by now. We are missing the trick-or-treaters, the poor children. Poor cat of mine. But just as Dr. Fogg was about to insult Max, he tripped over a log and fell face first in the water with a big splash. Dr. Fogg, that's what you get for not being able to see where you're going and saying nasty things about my precious Max. <laughs> Lady Dandelion, the only thing precious right now is time. And as he said that, she tripped over the same log and ended up next to him in the water, not noticing two turtles nearby. Come on, Sydney, we're going to be late. Myrtle, I'm going as fast as I can. I can't pile the mud on without your help. I don't know why you want to go as a mud pile anyway. It's not a pile, it's a mound. It's a heap, if you ask me, but if we don't get going, we'll end up with only purple gumdrops again. I like purple gumdrops. You would. This was said as Landy Dandelion hit the water and splashed, washing Sid's mud costume away. Now I have to start all over. Oh, just go as a rock like me. It's easy. That's not very creative. I know, but we don't have time for anything else. And the two of them left their bog and crawled into the night. Lady Dandelion and Dr. Fox swam around until they found the edge and climbed out of the water. Lady Dandelion, take my hand. No, thank you. I can manage myself. She stood up and the two of them began walking, but made it only a few feet when Dr. Fogg tripped over a rock. Lady Dandelion tripped over a rock as well. Dazed, they squinted in the darkness and saw the rocks creeping along the ground. Dr. Fogg, I must have hit my head. The rocks look like they're moving. Lady Dandelion, rocks don't move, even on Halloween. Well, but how do you explain that? And that... He saw the rocks moving and they ran away shouting, The rocks are haunted! The rocks are haunted! The rocks are haunted! The rocks are haunted! Wolver and Tweeter didn't go very far when they came across a rundown house with an open window near the ground. They were about to look inside when a voice said, What do you think you're doing? Shredder was standing behind them in the shadows. You're the cat we met at the vet. Is this your home? Yes, and not yours. Go away. Oh, we know. We have our own home. We're just out looking, some We're just out looking for someone. Well, look somewhere else. This is my turf. I'm out making sure everything is where it belongs and no one is where they don't. Tweeter uneasy climbed further back on Wolfer and asked, Are you hunting? 
No, I don't hunt. My person gives me tuna whenever I want it, especially first thing in the morning before their coffee. Hunting is for stray cats. Did you see another cat come this way? His name is Max. He lives with us. Oh, I know him. He thinks the tree over there is his. It's not. We settled that three lives ago, but he still tries to climb it. No, I didn't see him tonight, but now I'll be on high alert. Goodbye and go away now. And with that, Shredder slinked away back into the shadows. Cats aren't nice. I know, but at least he didn't try to eat me. I wonder what tuna is. Probably something awful, especially if cats like it. They continued walking down the street until they heard another familiar face. Yeah, they heard a face. Till they heard a familiar voice. Trick or treat! Trick or treat! I'm a creeper! Trick or treat! Look in the window. It's Judy the parrot. She has a home like me. They were about to go to the window when a group of animals like they'd never seen approached from the other direction. Their skin was as white as the stuff that came out of the sky and were wearing dirty ripped clothes and had some of the red stuff dripping from their mouths. Wolf, I'm squared. scared. Let's get out of here. And they ran away into the woods. They finally stopped under a big tree and heard, Who? 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 Oh, him again. I'll handle this, Tweeter said. You, you, that's who. Be quiet. Don't tell my husband to be quiet. He's working on a very important problem, said Betty the Owl. He's figuring out the square root of mice. What does that mean? See, you don't know either. That's why he has to figure it out before the zombies take over. What are zombies? They're animals that only come out at night and take people away forever. Don't you only come out at night? Yes. Well, then how do you know they only come out at night? As that completely confused Betty, she stopped speaking and stared forward, thinking about it. Wolfer and Tweeter left and found the street again, commenting, They are never any help. I know. Cats and birds aren't helpful at all. I know dogs are man's best friend. Um, I'm a bird. Okay, cats and other birds. As Wolfer and Tweeter continued down the street, a pickup truck approached and they ran into some bushes. They could hear barking and immediately recognized the voice. They saw boots hanging out the window. Bark, 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 bark. Wow, he's brave. He's scaring away the zombies. I hope I can be that brave someday. You don't even like the moving thing. I know, after Max told me all about what happens to you at the vet, I hope I never have to beat in it again. I don't trust him. I don't think I like him. You don't have to like someone to trust them, but I definitely don't like him. Now why are we looking for him? Meanwhile, Lady Dandelion and Dr. Fogg had dried off and continued searching for Max. Dr. Fogg, what if we run into zombies? Lady Dandelion, there is no such thing as zombies. Dr. Fogg, you're wrong. There are zombies. I've met your mother. And it's there. Yeah. And it's there are, not there is. At this moment, a bunch of teenagers emerged from the forest, making groaning and moaning sounds. They ran away as fast as they could, shouting, The zombies! The zombies! The zombies! The zombies! The zombies! One of the teenagers laughed. We're supposed to be stealing little kids' candy, not scaring old people. What were they doing out here with a net and no flashlight? They go back into the woods, waiting for unsuspecting trick-or-treaters to steal the candy. From... Mm. As Wolfer and Tweeter walked down the street, they saw two familiar they saw two somewhat familiar faces approaching, or at least two familiar shapes. <clears throat> they called out, "Hey, remember us? You're Slither and Cynthia, right?" "Yes, but tonight we're a pen and a pencil." "I'm a pen," said Slither. "No, you're a pencil. I'm a pen. You need sharpening." "You told me I'm stationary." "No, I meant stand still." What are you two? You're not in costume. We're not anything. We didn't know until our housemate told us about it. We'll be something next year. We're looking for a cat named Max. <clears throat> you could be an eagle. What's that? It's like an owl, but out in the day. They're bald and swoop down and eat anyone who isn't careful. They're horrifying. Terrifying. Sounds it, but then you could fly high up and find your friend very easily. I can't fly. Oh, that's too bad. We have to go. We heard there are extra crickets at Turbo the Tarantula's house, and the zombies are coming. We have to get out of here before we get stepped on. Good luck with that. Good night. I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't listen to them, said another familiar voice. It was Bum B. He was hovering under a dead sunflower and heard everything. He had a light blinking on his stinger. The only eagle around here isn't worth being. He's afraid of heights and lives alone beyond the bog in a sticker bush. A bird that can't fly isn't worth being at all. Hey, wait a minute. Okay, I mean a bird that won't fly. But they're right about the zombies, or at least mostly right. We don't have as much to worry about, but they like to stomp people on the ground. The ants definitely won't come out tonight, and the pieties are busy making webs in the woods trying to trap them. I'm trying to get as much candy as I can before I play poker with Sam the Firefly. I feel lucky tonight. You could be a firefly when I'm finished with the light. No thanks. I can't fly, remember? That's right. Good luck finding your friend. He's not our friend. Whatever he is, I hope he doesn't get stomped. And Bum B took off to collect more candy. Well, if why are we looking for Max? He wouldn't look for us. I know, but sometimes you have to be nice even if other people aren't. I'd rather dress him up as something that could get stomped than watch Tweet! Okay, okay, I'll be nice, but not if he eats me. You won't be anything if he eats you. You won't let that happen, will you? Of course not. I'd stomp him myself before that would happen. Lady Dandelion and Dr. Fogg were still running when they saw a blinking light in front of them and followed it. <clears throat> it's a little late for lightning bugs, but it might lead the way to the street. Bum B heard them and began flying much faster. He realized he was being chased and dropped his little light on the ground and flew away. Dr. Fogg picked it up, and although he could barely see with it, it shone just enough to reflect off of hundreds of eyes in the trees. Ghost! 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 They screamed and ran as fast as they could, right through a huge spider web, getting covered with it and right out into the street and into the path of the pickup truck. Boots saw the white human shapes and jumped out the window. Zombies! Bark! 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 Chasing them all the way down the street until he yelled, Boots! Get back here! I'm a good dog! I scared them away! He panted as he climbed back into the truck, tail still wagging wildly. Wolfer and Tweeter turned a corner and immediately recognized the house. Hey, look! It's our home! I thought you knew the area like the top of your foot. Um, I do. You seem surprised. No, I'm surprised because the door is closed. Great. We'll never get in. They walked onto the porch and saw Max sitting in the window. Let us in, Max. No, you left. Now you have to stay out there. Forever. That's not fair, Max. We went out looking for you. Really? Max thought for a moment, but still said, No, you can't come in. But then they heard Landy D Lady Dandelion and Dr. Fa behind them. <clears throat> I didn't think we'd ever find home. Now we can get a flashlight and find Max. You can find your cat yourself. I'm going for my evening stroll. Dr. Fogg, you are coming with me. I am not going into the... Oh, no! The dog and bird are out, and the door is closed. Lady Dandelion, you forgot to close the door. No, you were the last to leave. You forgot to close the door. At least Regency had the sense to not run away. Oh, look! My Max is in the window! Did you remember to bring your key? I can't remember everything! Lady Dandelion, you can't remember anything. We will have to climb in through the window. As they did this, Max jumped down and opened the door with his paw. Come in. It's inevitable. Wolfer and Tweeter walked in and watched the humans climb through the window. How did they get in? The door must not have been closed entirely. I have had enough zombies chasing your cat. This has been a horrid night. Well, it ended perfectly fine with me, and everyone is safe. We missed the trick-or-treaters. What will we do with all of the treats? Max slipped his li licked his lips. Woofer looked up and at Tweeter and smiled. They could hear barking in the distance. I feel safe in here, knowing what's out there. We're lucky, all of us. And now we have all the treats for ourselves, Max snickered as if he had planned it all along.